Hey, it's been two years since I published the first video on this channel and I thought that maybe it is worth sharing my experience from this time and a few of my opinions on how it feels to build a niche educational YouTube channel from the ground up. And yes, I will share my staggering AdSense results as well. Cardboard Robots is not my first attempt on YouTube. Many years ago I had been publishing my music videos. Later on uh, I was creating some video content for Lo-Fi Robot. But it always felt overwhelming for me to build a full-size YouTube channel with a regular stream of content. It simply seemed like a ton of work and I couldn't believe I will be able to maintain high quality creative output in the long run. So even though I always wanted to do it, it took me something like 10 years to take YouTube seriously. The idea of cardboard robots has been also walking after me for a few years before I started this channel, but at the time I was committed to producing and selling physical robotics kits and I could not see any clear path how such things as cardboard robot designs could be turned into any reliable business. And what I knew by then was that if there won't be any income generation in the process, this will simply not last very long. I needed two things to take it seriously. First was a moment of a small epiphany when I realized that cardboard robots in fact is actually a perfect idea for an educational channel with easy and accessible STEAM content for teachers. And second was a bigger crisis in my company when I lost all the projects I was focused on before and I simply thought that, well, there is nothing else to do now. So. Underlying concepts of this channel are I am creating educational content for teachers and educators who teach STEAM subjects, robotics or coding to kids mainly in primary school. I'm not trying to entertain kids directly. Most of my videos are building manuals designed to be used directly in the class by students. I use mostly BBC Microbit as an electronics platform, but have plans to make it more universal and open to other platforms as well. My target group is a niche within a niche, teachers and educators of STEAM subjects who use Microbit platform and want to build robots. Doing a basic calculation, if 10 million microbit boards had been sold worldwide until today, and let's roughly estimate that 70% of it is educational use, and about half of this might be in active use by now, then one teacher might have 10 to 15 boards. I could roughly estimate that there could be something from 100 to 200 thousands of teachers and educators who use microbit and might be looking for new educational ideas. So it seems like an audience worth trying to reach to. Starting up. My first approach was to publish one robot every week. I thought I had quite a few of them in the pipeline and will manage to operate like this. But quite quickly, I realized that robot ideas is not an endless stream of possibilities and maybe I could make 40 or 50 of them, but not much more. And what then? This was the reason I had to let go to the concept of keeping the channel faceless and started to make some talking videos with apps and lessons. I also tried to introduce some new type of content like the AI in the classroom series with direct lesson ideas for exercises with the use of AI. But even though I published it in the top of the chat GPT craze, or maybe because of it, the series did not catch up at all. The reason for this may be also that I introduced it too quickly and maybe it was too big of a change for the algorithm to find an audience for such content. Going viral. In the first year, I had one experience with a video for which I could say went a little viral, at least for my scale. And I have few important takeaways from that situation. I made a building tutorial of a cute cardboard robot dog with a catchy title. It did not fire up immediately. It had quite a nice start going something like a thousand views in a week and then gradually slowly getting some traction. Then there was a summer break and I stopped publishing at all for some time and suddenly, a few months later, the robot dog video started getting some major traffic, reaching about 70,000 views in the span of one month and getting me from 500 to 3000 subscribers. And yes, I have to say it was fun while it lasted. I had some nice dopamine hits out of this. But what else? Well, nothing much. After YouTube stopped showing this video, my views dropped to almost nothing. 
and the whole dynamics of a viral video is the fact that it gets you a lot of eyes but it is very random and with little engagement. And what that means is that this video was a few seconds of entertainment for some people, but they were not teachers and not educators and not interested into watching any other robot ideas and not even thinking about using any other of mine designs at school. So in fact, aside from few nice numbers, this traffic was literally useless for me. And it helped me quite quickly rationalize the concept of all this gibberish of going viral, chasing the algorithm, etc. It is really not that important and does not bring meaningful audience. The most fantastic thing on YouTube for me is the fact that it doesn't matter what type of content you do, if it provides any meaningful value for anyone, the algorithm does quite a good job in finding these people. And if I am doing a niche thing, there might be a very small audience for this, and this is okay, because it is not a matter of going wide, but going precise. So what I take out from this is that it is not about trying to cheat the algorithm, but simply letting it do its work and it will bring you the audience sooner or later if the video I do provides a relevant value for the people I want to reach. And this takes down this whole burden of trying to catch up with trends, clickbaits, over-dramatizing, doing silly dances, stuffing videos with tons of memes and all this nonsense. This is really a relief for me. This was also the moment when YouTube really caught up with me because I understood that it is a place on the internet where I can put my creative output and it will work over time. Not super fast and it does not get very popular but it is alive and accumulates constant and growing traffic and this is fantastic especially that most of my videos have this evergreen functionality. They remain relevant and searchable for a long time. They usually do not get more than a thousand views in the first week, but constantly harvest traffic over months and years. As I see it, YouTube now is the only medium that provides this long-term livability. Other social media feels like a black hole for me, where I drop something and it disappears into the void within minutes. And this evergreen approach also resulted in a different publishing schedule. Against all YouTube advices, I do not care too much about publishing regularly and I do not think too much if it is good for the channel or not. Right now I am working more in a project-oriented approach. I develop one subject like DIY LED modules or Teachable Machine app lately and build few videos around it. Then I record them in one or two days and edit and publish them in the span of few weeks. Before I started working like that, setting up all of the recording equipment and arranging the space was a point of huge friction and procrastination for me. So I like it much more to condense it, prepare in advance and record few videos in one go and then work on them later. I publish few videos in a row and become quiet for some time. If I have no ideas for new videos, I do not make new videos. Letting go of this strict publishing schedule for me is also very important because it is again a stress relief. Before starting this channel, my main concern was that I won't be able to publish creative content constantly in the long run. I also have a personal experience of burnout in my job, even though this educational robotics in my own company is what I do for a living for the last 10 years and it might look like a cool thing to do, still, even when you do your passion for a living, it can eat you up. But this is a topic for another video. Anyway, it is really, really important for me to work in a mentally healthy manner. And to my big surprise, it seems possible. Even in the world of social media, where we're grinding, overperforming and pushing it all the time is common. Maybe it is not the only way to go especially if I want to go long. And this brings us finally to monetization. I have to admit that the process of reaching monetization criteria is very smartly gamified by YouTube. You get access to the statistics in the studio, you see your videos performing in real time, and it is almost like playing some kind of a real-time strategy game where you plan your next moves, watch the outcomes, and compare it with the previous ones. It is very easy to get hooked on. 
especially that somehow it is very unclear to predict how much you can actually earn from AdSense. So for the first year or so, it becomes some kind of a mysterious game. For me, it was quite quick to reach 1000 subscribers due to the robot dog video, but I had some doubts if I will be able to reach 4000 watch hours in one year, because my videos have quite low average watch time at around one minute and a half. In the end, it took me 14 months and 37 videos to reach monetization criteria. So how much do I earn from my channel now? Well, not much. The channel is still small with an average of 20,000 views and 500 hours of watch time a month and average CPM is about 2.2 US dollars. So I earn around 35 US dollars a month before tax. Not a chance to treat it as a serious income. The channel would have to get 100 times bigger to barely break even and cover my costs only with AdSense and I do not expect it to happen anytime soon. And being at this scale yet, I also had no offers of any sponsored commercial content, and I also don't quite see how doing any reviews or product placement could fit this channel. But if your company would like to be an official partner of Cardboard Robots and get this channel is powered by type of splash card at the beginning of each video, I'm open, so hit me up. So how do I manage to make it work? In the long run, it looks like this YouTube channel is a marketing tool for me, which gathers traffic with educational content and gives me a chance to drive it into my website. And it took me more than it should to realize the value of this. I didn't put much attention into Cardboard Robots website in the beginning, clinging on to dreams of AdSense income and partnerships. It also took me quite a long time to realize the value of Google traffic for the website. And only in the last few months, I put any text content on the website to make it a bit more SEO friendly. By now, 50% of the traffic comes from Google and 40% comes from YouTube. I also have some direct traffic from my apps, especially the Lo-Fi Control app and direct traffic from closed school platforms, which I'm really fond about because it shows that the content is used in the schools. All this allowed me to open Cardboard Robot Shop and get some of your eyes to look at it. The shop also went through few evolution stages. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I come from a business of selling physical robotic kits and I had it somehow engraved in my brain that selling robotic kits is a thing to do. So at first I started offering cardboard robots kits, but never really believing in them, I sold only few. Video course for teachers seemed also like an obvious thing to go, but my main product was created a little by coincidence. From the beginning and still to this day, the tagline for my project is free cardboard robot designs for education and the design plan of every robot is baked into the video and available on the website for free. In the process of growing up my digital marketing skills, I thought that I could give out printable PDF of these templates as a lead magnet for subscribing to the newsletter. And then it came out to me that I do not have to give it for free. And even though the robot plans are free, the PDF that you can print and glue to the cardboard and skip the process of drawing anything yourself is a product with a value and selling it does not make my free robot designs tagline fake. So in November last year, I started selling this PDF with templates and the video course shortly after. And this allows me at the moment to get an average income of about $800 a month. So it is still much too little to break even. But selling a PDF online, this was a huge discovery for me. Selling physical robotic kits as a small company and shipping it worldwide is a totally bad idea. But selling a downloadable PDF without shipping anything and even generating invoices automatically, this can work. The other physical product I had in offer was a pack of laser cut stencils. I think it is a fantastic product for teachers, which simplify the process of drawing and it is reusable. I also designed it to add some original value to my robotics kits, which otherwise could seem like a pack of regular off-the-shelf products. But still, the problem with shipping remained. So it took me another few months to finally let it go and commit to selling stencil designs as digital files to laser cut yourself. It is much less accessible than printable stencils because you have to get access to laser cutting machine or service. But over the last few years, more and more of them are available at schools and makerspaces. 
So it is a kind of a specialized product for a specific audience. But this recent mind shift is a personal revolution for me. I am totally decided on ditching physical products and going all digital with an offer of printable and laser cutting templates. And this is my plan to grow cardboard robots as a business. So this was a breakdown of my development around this YouTube channel and cardboard robots as a business. It is going quite slow, but stable and healthy. I am at about 25% until break even, but selling digital products seems very promising and I'm focusing on this now. I am also finally trying to learn basics of digital marketing and product market fit. And this is maybe the most interesting part of the process for me by now. Hope you find this little insight useful. Cheers.